Hello everyone, it's Truds here and today we've got another Destiny 2 build video. This is it. This season we are going hard, we are going all in as I aim to make this place your one stop shop for all the latest and greatest builds in Destiny 2. We started off with a great footing last season and ended on a really high note for the channel. And now it's time to kick on and give you all the best that I can deliver. So if that's what you want, then go on, hit that subscribe button. It's free and while you're at it, give a rating down below too. It all helps to support the content I produce and I appreciate every single ounce of it. Season of Arrivals is finally here after a totally epic reveal launch stream hosted by Bungie game director Luke Smith and with it, there's a whole load of shiny new goodness to take in. In between dealing with the Drifter's funky ramshackle crypt arch and questing through the initial story beats of the season, I've actually managed to come up with an awesome build using some of the new seasonal mods. Now looking into this, with the seasonal mods, it seems as though they may actually be bugged and that you shouldn't have access to them so quickly. Especially given that the main one in this build is a rank 15 rank up reward for the prismatic recaster vendor in the tower. But we'll be going through how you can access these new arrivals mods early before this gets patched and we'll show you a somewhat powerful build that will give you up to half of your super back with very little effort. Now I wanted to get this build out of the gates early in the season to show what's possible and to whet your appetite as I'm highly expecting to expand on this build throughout the season with a further one if not two versions of it once all the other mods are unlocked in the artifact. So on starting the season and going into the drifters newly upgraded part of the annex in the tower, you will come across the new seasonal mods. These have various charge with light perks that are unlocked for purchase as you upgrade the prismatic recaster. These mods will work with the new arrival seasonal armor set as well as the worthy armor drops from last season. Currently on the new arrivals armor though, you can't select any of these new mods other than what you've already unlocked. However, if you go into any of your armor you collected from season of the worthy, you'll find that all of the mods for each energy affinity are unlocked and accessible to use. Now there's more available than what you can unlock from the vendor, so I don't know what the deal is there, but if you go into any new season of the arrivals gear, you'll notice that you don't have any armor mods unlocked for the season. Now if this gets patched before you catch this video, then you'll have to rank up to unlock the mods as required, but if it isn't, then definitely give this one a go. So I started off putting this build around a new seasonal exotic kinetic grenade launcher with a horde. And so, that's where we're going to start with this somewhat hybrid build. Wither Horde is a very unique weapon, which is accessible from the Season of Arrival Season Pass at rank 1 for premium users and further along the track for the free one. Its intrinsic perk, Primeval's Torment, causes projectiles fired by this weapon to blight the target or nearby area on impact. It also comes with the trait, Break the Bank whereby blighted targets take damage over time and on death, blight the area nearby. So on direct impact, it does a take and blight effect and immediately starts damage over time on the target. However, you can also create pools of blights on the floor surrounding targets to also cause further damage over time to enemies stood within one. The most impactful method to cause maximum DPS though is to shoot directly at the target and then shoot at the floor for double the impact of the blight tick damage effect. Direct shots are also a one shot in PvP with the damage over time and the pools will cause significant damage to anybody passing through. It'll be a great weapon for choke points and map control in PvP and as for PvE, any horde type event will be where it stands out of which the new seasonal event, Contact, will be a top place to use it. Ok, so now we're getting into the mods for this build and it's going to be centred around the Charge with Light mechanic. Energy Converter is the new seasonal mod available in part from the Prismatic Recaster and will be found in the seasonal mod slot for Worthy and Arrivals armour. 
It's a Void Affinity mod which costs 4 energy and is another dual purpose mod. It comes with a base minus 10 stat penalty to your discipline stat which affects your grenade cooldown, which can negatively affect the actual benefit of this mod but it's something we can build around. Its main benefit though is, while charged with light, using your grenade grants super energy, consuming all stacks of charge with light. The more stacks you have, the more energy you gain, up to a maximum of 50% of your super energy. So on the base of this mod, it is super useful. Pardon the pun. Now if you remember, a base max stack of charge with light is 2 times, utilising any mod that will make you charge with light. But there is ways to maximise the stacks up to 5 times and therefore grant you the 50% super energy return for using a grenade. So now we're going to be using 2 mods to make us charge with light and 2 further mods to maximise the stacks of charge with light you can hold. First up is Blast Radius. This Dawn armor mod costs 3 solar energy. It allows you to become charged with light by rapidly defeating multiple combatants with grenade launchers or rocket launchers. Now, as we're using the Wither Horde and its area of effect damage over time, you'll regularly be getting multi kills on low tier adds and therefore will become charged with light easily. The next mod is the basic Taking Charge Dawn armor mod. It costs 3 neutral energy and will allow you to become charged with light by collecting orbs of light. You'll create orbs of light often by using masterworked weapons to get multi kills and even the wither horde will do this once you complete the catalyst. Obviously you can collect orbs from other players supers so it is a great mod for becoming charged with light. So now we're able to become charged with light often and easily so we need to max it up and in order to do that you'll firstly need the mod Charged Up. Another Dawn Armor mod that costs 2 solar energy and this allows for one additional stack of charge with light so now you can get a 3 times stack. But we can now bump this up even further with one of the new Arrival seasonal mods Supercharged. This solar affinity mod costs 5 energy and now allows you a further 2 additional stacks of charge with light. And with all of this together, you'll be able to obtain a 5x stack of charge with light. Now we've got the stacks of charge with light, let's look at how this works. Now from testing this out in numerous encounters and events, it seems to only proc the energy converter after you've used a super. So how I'd run this is that I'd build up my 5 stacks as I also build up my super energy. Then once I use my super on a major or boss and drain my super bar, I'd then use my grenade either on other adds or even just throw it away and I'd instantly get nearly 50% of my super back. Now I believe this will only proc once per super charge and so I don't think it's possible, at least from my testing, to use stacks repeatedly to boost your super energy each time. But I mean basically, cutting your super regen in half is a massive game changer and there's tons of scope to maximise this even further when paired with certain exotics. As for subclasses, I've paired this build with the bottom tree Voidwalker, Attunement of Hunger to greatly assist with the grenade regen rate thanks to the insatiable perk. This will regen your grenade energy and refresh the devour perk when devour is active on killing an enemy. Devour will also help as you will fully restore your health when you get a charged melee kill and for each subsequent final blow afterwards. You can also proc devour with feed the void by consuming your grenade. The final steps of this build all work around creating orbs of light, weapon and ability cooldowns. I'd highly recommend a masterwork energy or power weapon to create consistent orbs of light for yourself to collect to become charged with light. Any previous ritual or pinnacle weapons will work fine here if you haven't masterworked any specific weapons. Also, Demolitionist on a weapon roll can help even further with the grenade cooldown. I'd also recommend either Discipline or Intellect mods to assist further with a grenade or super cooldown, but the build is pretty much maxed out at this point. 
One other handy tip I'd say is to use a grenade launcher loader mod to increase the reload speed of the painfully slow exotic, and even a dexterity mod for improved handling. These are void affinity mods on your arms and leg armour respectively. Now one piece I'm going to dunk into the end of this build is the skull of Dyer Hahamkara. Its main perk, actual grandeur, will refund super energy on Nova Bomb final blows. Which as we're running bottom tree vortex Nova Bomb, there's scope for lots of multi kills and this will blend nicely into the already great super regen from the energy converter mod. So there we go. The first build of the season is in the bag and it won't be the last. With the seasonal artifact mods and other affinities to go through, there's lots to come, so please watch this space. Please let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the new reveal and the timeline for the future free further expansions of Destiny 2. If you're new here, then please hit subscribe to stay up to date with the latest content on the channel. A rating down below is always greatly appreciated too. All the support lately has been absolutely incredible. As always, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.